All right, so first impressions, this sucker's pretty heavy. Not gonna lie, it is definitely a two person lift. I would want help installing that. Uh, you could probably do it one person if you're particularly strong. I would recommend a second pair of hands. Uh, the handles hinge, which I think is pretty nice. You know, you normally want them like that, but they also hinge out like that. Uh, terminals look like they, oh, that's a slide off plastic cover. That's kind of a nice touch. Uh, we got our on off button. Looks like we got some alarm codes, state to charge LEDs. Got your big old master breaker for the battery. Same slide off on the negative. Dip switches. Dip switches. Not quite sure what that is for, but I'm sure the manual will tell me. Uh, over on this side, we've got a couple of communication ports. And nothing over on the other side. So yeah, that's where all the communication will be. Uh, looking pretty good, just on first impressions. Let's see if we can power it on. Look at that. So it's given us its status. Right now it's 52.71 volts, pretty good. That's what, 54%? Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, it is in standby, current is zero. Is this, let's see, what is this letting me do? Oh. Okay, so that looks like cell pack voltages. Uh, we got temperatures, that's pretty nice. You know, not stuff you'll need to use on a daily basis, but it's good to have. Right, so just a couple of things you can do there. Uh, state of charge LEDs. It only gives you a four, so that's not, you know, the most accurate readout in the world, but since you do have a percentage displayed for you, I'm not too worried about that. Um, yeah, otherwise looking, uh, looking pretty solid. Okay, that doesn't turn off the battery, but I imagine that does disable the outputs. Let me verify that. We are currently disabled, zero volts, 52.5. Beautiful. So you got an on battery disconnect as well as uh, the inverter will have a disconnect. And the inverter, I believe, is actually capable of directly disconnecting the batteries if there is ever a issue. Um, so really pretty safe, pretty well constructed. Uh, one thing to note is we've got a bunch of screws over here. Uh, that feels good considering how much weight uh, is going to be resting on those when you're handling it. Uh, obviously, when it's installed, you won't need to worry about that so much. Uh, but I do, you know, worst thing is when a handle comes off uh, unexpectedly. That's really no fun. Um, otherwise, yeah, just like the inverter. Fairly impressed on a first glance. Uh, seems beefy, seems, uh, seems pretty rugged. Uh, you know, I probably wouldn't want to use this one outdoors, uh, but if we're talking in a cabin, in a shed, uh, in your garage, I could see something like this doing a great job. Uh, you could put it in a van. Um, in a van, uh, the weight and scale of a system built out of these might be a little much. Uh, if we were talking something like a bus uh, or potentially an RV, I could see you being able to get enough solar on the roof to, uh, to justify something larger like this. Now, curiously enough, this one is not giving me any screws that I can't undo. Should I try and pop it open? Mm. 
I don't see that. I don't think I need to. Seems like it might be harder than you think. It's all of these bolts. Yeah, it'd be those four and then around the edge. But I don't see a huge benefit of doing that. I mean, I'm just going to show the cells. Did it time out after a little bit? Yeah. That's good. I like that. You know, just switch it off. Beautiful. Just uh, looking through the manual here, and one thing I forgot to mention about these specific batteries is they have built in fire extinguishers. So, you know, lithium iron phosphate is already a very safe chemistry. It's not really susceptible to thermal runaway, but just as an added layer of safety, uh, there are two little uh, fire extinguishing modules in here that if there is a runaway thermal event, they will douse the fire. Uh, so given that this is going to be almost definitely in a structure or vehicle that you are living in, uh, having that protection makes a lot of sense. Uh, and honestly, I'm surprised I don't see it in more. Um, looks like we do have a uh, dip switch table. So that's probably for uh, directly entering settings if you don't have computer access. Uh, although I would imagine uh, getting computer access will give you much easier uh, setting interactions. Uh, we've got the LCD screen that we already went through. Uh, software updates. That's pretty cool. Software updates on your battery. How about that? We're living in the future. Got some BMS tools, apparently, and I haven't personally tried this, but I have read it in a lot of places. Uh, you can connect these with a lot of different companies' equipment. Uh, so Victron, I believe, is able to read these. Um, uh, I don't remember most of them off the top of my head, but pretty much the majority of the big names should be able to interface with these without issue. I've uh, got our warnings, so it does tell you... Uh, what they are, it gives you some basic troubleshooting. Uh, it shows you some of the alarms, goes over the warranty. 10 year warranty. Uh, you do have to register it, but that is a 10 year warranty. That's real impressive. Um, even gives you performance curves. I would say my overall impression after reading through the manual is this is a nice piece of equipment. Uh, I'm going to get it hooked up. I'm going to test it out. And, you know, I don't expect to not like it. Uh, really, the only deal breaker might be if the, the, um, uh, the setup process is really complicated and not very user-friendly to a DIYer. Uh, but aside from that, I, I've got a really good first impression. And I'm looking forward to getting my hands on it.